What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with this series. Slowly but surely, I'm going to continue with this series of, at least in my opinion, the top 10 NBA draft classes of all times. All right, just do a brief recap, of course. At number 10, I had the 1998 NBA draft. At number 9, the 1999 NBA draft. At number 8, the 2009 NBA Draft. At number 7, the 1987 NBA Draft. And at number 6, I have the 1970 NBA Draft. Now this is a draft that doesn't get talked about much. Uh, a lot of people tend to focus on drafts from 1980 onwards. Understandably, it's a generational thing generational bias, recency bias. We're from all familiar with guys who played in the last 25 to 30 years. But the 1970 draft was, was very impressive. Uh, this man right here, of course, was part of that draft. Pistol Pete Maravich, who was one of the greatest collegiate players of all times. While his NBA career was still stellar, it did not quite match up to expectations. And, and don't get me wrong, he still had an NBA, a Hall of Fame NBA career, but when you saw what he did in college, I mean, you kind of expected him to be at least a top 10 all-time player with that type of performance in college. But then again, his father was his head coach in college, too, so he got, you know, not taking away from his greatness, but the system truly ran around his son. Uh, but the 1970 NBA draft was the 24th annual draft of the NBA. The draft took place on March 23, 1970. Back then, there was just 17 teams, not the 23, 25, 27, now 30, uh, I think it is now, in the NBA. It was different, a much smaller league. So not as many people, not as many players were, were drafted. Back then, there was a rule where you had to... Uh, go to college for four years and be drafted. So either you had to go your full four years to be drafted to the NBA, or you had to wait until your graduating class was eligible to be in the NBA for you to go. So if you dropped out, say, two or three years into college, you couldn't go pro early in the NBA. Um, you couldn't do that. You had to wait until your graduating class went, uh, graduated, and then you'd be eligible for the NBA. But what a lot of guys were doing at that time was they were going into the ABA. Um, they were dropping out of college earlier. Not a lot of guys, but some guys were doing it. Some guys, I'll take that back. Some guys were dropping out of college early and then going to the ABA. Um, an example of a guy that did that, I believe, was Julius Serb because they had this hardship clause where if you could prove financial hardship, well, you can go into the ABA and become a professional out of financial reasons. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> that's neither here nor there. This particular draft was, was phenomenal. Um, let's look at this draft right quick. So, number one in the NBA draft was Bob Lanier, the now late Bob Lanier. Uh, he was drafted first of all out of St. Bonaventure. Of course, he went to the Detroit Pistons, where he played for quite a number of years. And, um, of course, he also spent some time, I believe he ended his career playing with the Milwaukee Bucks. Second in that draft was Rudy Tomjanovich. Now, of course... Rudy Tom Jones is now synonymous with being a great head coach for the Houston Rockets for many, for many years, won two championships, two consecutive championships with that franchise. And he's also known for a terrible moment in NBA history when basketball enforcer Kermit Washington punched Tom Jones in the face so hard that, uh, if I remember correctly, he fractured his skull, uh, his face Basically, was fractured. Like his entire face was fractured. Um, he was spitting up. 
I believe, uh, spinal fluid. Uh, he was in a very bad, bad state for a while. Um, and uh, I think for the next season he wore a face mask. Uh, but Rudy Tomjanovich um, had a really good career. Maybe not the career that you thought he would have, but he had a really good career, a really good player. Um, but, of course, he's better known for being a head coach. Uh, third in the draft was Pete Maravich. Of course, I already talked about him out of Louisiana State. Uh, by the way, Rudy Tomjanovich was out of Michigan, drafted by the then San Diego Rockets, who would become the Houston Rockets. Um, Pete Maravich, considered by many of the greatest LSU player ever, drafted by Atlanta Hawks. Uh, I believe he was actually, to be honest with you, I think he was actually drafted by San Francisco, but then traded to Atlanta Hawks. And um, that's where he started his NBA career. Fourth in the draft was Dave Cowles on the Florida State. And was essentially the replacement for Bill Russell. Of course, Bill Russell retired after the 68-69 season. And Dave Collins will have a Hall of Fame career, winning an MVP award in 1973. Uh, leading him being rebounding, I think, one year. And uh, won in two championships in 74 and 76. And I think he won... No, I don't think he did. I think I think uh, seventy four. That was that was Habercheck. Fifth in that draft was center Sam Lacy. Sam Lacy, one of the best centers in Sacramento Kings history at the time. It was Cincinnati Royals. He was drafted out of North, out of New Mexico State. Six was Jim Ard, out of Cincinnati, drafted by the then expansion Seattle SuperSonics. John Johnson out of Iowa, drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers, who I believe were a new franchise as well that year. I think that year there were a lot of new expansion franchises. And this goes to show you the NBA was doing very well for it to expand that greatly during the Russell Chamberlain years. Everybody was talking about, oh, the basketball wasn't really good. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Geoff Petrie was eighth out of Princeton, drafted by the Portland Trailblazers, which I believe were another. Let me see. Were they an expansion team that year? Yep. Another team that came into existence in 1970. You know, I think I did a video where I said between 1966 and 1980, 14 teams joined the NBA. Something like 14 teams joined the NBA. I think the NBA expanded from like nine teams to like 23. And that goes to show you that even though people would like to say that the NBA was struggling, uh, only in comparison to how they were doing in the 60s, the golden era at that time. They were struggling, but they weren't on the verge of like, you know, folding as a as a lead. You know, they were on the on the verge of maybe contracting some teams, but not as bad as people, some people make out to be. But anyway, going through the rest of this draft, Georgie Johnson, uh, drafted by the Baltimore Bullets, Greg Howard, Jimmy Collins, Al Henry. Jim McMillan. Let me see if I can name some guys that uh Calvin Murphy. All right, out of Niagara, eighteenth. Drafted by the then San Diego Rockets. Nate Archibald, nineteenth. Texas El Paso. Drafted by the Cincinnati Royals, but his pick was traded from the San Francisco uh Warriors at the time. Uh who else? That's about it. Gar Hurd was in the third round. Gar Hurd, who we kind of remember more for the Phoenix Suns. Uh, he was drafted out of Oklahoma by the Sonics. And uh, 
the son of George Mikan, Larry Mikan, was drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers out of Minnesota. Did not have the game that his father had, obviously. Charlie Scott, who I just did a video about, drafted out of North Carolina by the Boston Celtics, but ultimately he went on to play for the uh, Virginia Squires. Dan Arcel, uh, Dan Arcel out of Kentucky, drafted by Detroit Pistons, but ultimately Dan Arcel went to play for the Kentucky Colonels of the ABA. And Randy Smith, the, long, the, uh, the Iron Man, original one of the great Iron Men in NBA history, drafted by the Buffalo Braves of the Buffalo State. And Randy Smith, of course, for many years held the consecutive games played record at 906, which was ultimately beaten by an even greater Iron Man in A.C. Green. That's the 1970 NBA draft, man. A lot of great players that would dominate the NBA uh, for many, many years. Uh, just looking at this team now. Um, Dave Collins will win two championships. Nate Archibald won a championship in 81 with the Celtics. Gaher was in the 1976 NBA Finals. Charlie Scott will be uh, in the NBA in 1976 winning a championship. And uh, that's the 1970 NBA draft, man. But tell me what you guys think.